How you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? How's everybody? question for you. I mean, I, it has nothing to do with racing right now, but I, I was with a uh, real good friend of yours. Wait, wait, are you guys ready? Come on! Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Harvick! Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, don't tell <laughs> Kevin, they, I, didn't, I didn't tell him to do it. You can come <laughs> I didn't tell him to do it. You can come out! <laughs> you took a beating last night. I took a beating, but I guess it was all in good fun. But you know what? The roast is not going to start with you. I got to start with you, though, Clint, because I was with a good friend of yours yesterday, uh, Tim George Jr. Yeah, and uh, Tim says uh, that uh, you got your jeans and stuff from him dressing, you dressing like him, because uh, you like the way uh, he looks. That's just what he asked me. He goes, is it? Just ask him about the way he dresses. You know, because I had a pair of jeans on the I like them though. And I told him, I was like, listen, man, I'm a race car driver, not a damn fashion statement. <laughs> I don't shop. My girlfriend does. <laughs> well, hey, and that was the next question. He says, he doesn't ask him about me taking his girlfriend yeah. out to dinner instead of him. And I said, okay. He goes, Johnny, it's okay. It's okay. It was all good. So, Kevin, I thought you would like the fact that I'm making fun of him first. I look. By the way, I saw you dressed up for the occasion today. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I didn't get my jeans from Tim, I guess. But anyway, it's, uh, yeah, I took a beating last night, but I think you're next. I think the next roast is on you, bud. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> You gotta it's, win the 500, so uh, it's, I mean, it's you, hard to it's hard to take a beating from your wife and not have to not be able to give anything back. What was that like? Oh, that was brutal, dude. And I watched the worst TV. I felt bad. The worst the worst part about the whole thing is they got all those comedians involved, and then they got the the people writing the scripts, and and it just took what you gave them for material, and it just took it right out in the right field, and they I said noticed, whatever they wanted to. The worse the beating, the more your bucket went dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Budweiser got less and less as the night. And the thing I have found out about Budweiser, though, is you don't ever run out of Budweiser. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, and, that, and that's one of my questions for you. How does it go, go coming from free oil to free beer? It's a lot more fun. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. We went from, we went from white collars and slacks to t-shirts and jeans. <laughs> I feel normal again. <laughs> well, I gotta ask you guys, and I, you know, Clint, I'll start with you, man. Today's the big race. How do you feel for it going into today's race? And you know, anybody with an ECR engine under the hood should be feeling good. I mean, uh, you know, since last year, we've been uh, the ones to beat down here, and I still think it's that way. Uh, Jeff, Kevin, um, you know, Paul, and myself, we've all got a shot at winning this thing, and we owe it to ourselves to try to help each other do that. Yeah, I, I think as, as the week's gone, I think our cars have been in position to, to run up front and lead laps and have a chance to win every race. These guys got it done in the, in the dual race. Um, you know, when you look at the rest of the weekend and talk about ECR, uh, Austin got the pole in the truck and Elliot had a chance to win the race coming off of turn four and wound up second uh, to a half a spoiler. And um, Clayton and, and Tony got it done yesterday. So, you know, I think we'll be right in the, hopefully right in the mix of it today. I, I think it's... You know, it's going to come down to, to not making any mistakes um, on pit road, getting into the pits, getting out of the pits, uh, not losing your drafting partner, and just trying to, you know, go as hard as you can all day to, to not get lapped and, and not have things go wrong. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting day. It's going to be a 500-mile race, and you're going to have to drive every lap because you're going to have to be attached to somebody. You know, I'm going to ask you guys, and I'm going to ask both of you the exact same question. I mean, you guys had some time off, you know, this year, and it's your first race. What would you guys do on your time off? I worked. <laughs> From January 2nd, I was so glad to come to the racetrack last week because I was tired of being uh, at home. We, we added two teams this year, uh, KHI, and, and so we had to add 40 people uh, to come in and work and hire all those people and make sure it all meshed. So. Uh, my job's done over there, so now we can go race on the race weekends. Well, what I heard yesterday, though, on TV was your wife does all the work, and you just kind of show up, hey, is what I heard. I'd be more than happy to let her do all the work, but <laughs> when I left, she was still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> the rest begins. 
<laughs> That's going to be a long year for her, isn't it? Actually, I did the same thing. I added a team, but uh, I only added two employees, not four. But, <laughs> which means... Uh, a lot better on the on the wallet, but uh, you have to do most of the work yourself. So um, you know that's that's what we do. You know, our racers. Uh, that's what we're accustomed to. That's what we love to do. And being at the race shop is just what we do. Clint, I gotta ask you, um, what goals have you set for your for you you know yourself and for your team this year? Well, I mean, obviously coming here and winning the Daytona Daytona 500 in front of you guys um, and winning a championship. But uh, the problem is, the small problem is, there's 43 other guys with the same goal. So. Uh, that presents a problem. Kevin, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Well, I think after last year, right, you know, you got that taste in your mouth of, of wanting to, to do the same things that you did and, and being so close to the championship, you want to go out and, and do that again. So uh, we just have to do the same things that we did last year, but we have to get better in every spot. You know, there's not one particular thing that sticks out that, that we need to get better at. So, um, you know, we're just going to go out and, and race and, and do the things that uh, hopefully that we did last year with the consistency, hopefully be able to, to win a couple more races. I gotta ask, you guys are in great shape, and we have a grueling schedule this year. I mean, what do you guys do to stay in shape? Work. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you hear us? No, we, uh, we get out of bed and work your ass off all day. That's what you do. Um, but we all, you know, actually, I Kevin started working. He's got a trainer and everything. A couple years ago, you started. It's been about three, four years now. And then uh, I actually started a couple weeks ago. <laughs> He's young. Right, right. Thought I needed no, to get myself me. ready for the Daytona 500. He's like, dude, were you not paying attention? We work. <laughs> I started two weeks ago. <laughs> no, that's awesome. What do you guys do for hobbies when you're not racing? I know you race. I know that you said that, but I mean, what do you guys like to do when you're not racing? Well, usually every year we go on some kind of hunt. The last I didn't go last year just because we had so much going on with the with the chase and, and everything there. So um, we've gone on, on some elk hunts. We've gone on some uh, to Mexico on some dove hunts. Um, so we go hunting a couple times, once or twice a year, and sometimes we'll go shoot skeet. Uh, during the week, I like to do, I, I have to get out of the, the whole racing thing. I have to go get in, out and do something totally different. So I've tried to take up golf. I'm still, no, really? not very, I'm not very good at that, <laughs> but I enjoy going to the country club and drinking beer. <laughs> so you like the 19th hole? Yeah, the 19th hole is the best. <laughs> I don't golf. I lost all my money to him one time, and I figured if I, could, if I lose to Kevin Harvick in golf, I have no business golfing. So I gave up the sport that day, but, uh, you know, I actually did the same thing. Richard kind of drags me into it. Uh, uh, you know, I went hunting. He cheats. Richard's a Golfing. cheater. But he's allowed to, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's got a hand wedge and a foot wedge in his back. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you can definitely see him, you know, talking about something and give the old... <laughs> And then I'll be, oh, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> At the end of the day, he'll shoot an 80. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I actually went deer hunting with my, uh, you know, my best friend back home. I had a blast, and I actually let my brother shoot my damn deer. And uh, sat in that stand for two and a half weeks, day and night. And his brother showed up that morning, and we'd been out drinking with uh, Kevin's buddies. And uh, I didn't get up that morning, and he showed up, and within 20 minutes, shot my deer that I've been sitting on. So that was my deer experience. You guys have both been racing a while. What's your most memorable moment yet in racing? I oh, just, um, you know, winning your first cup race, being here at Daytona. You know, this place means so much to everybody in this sport. I mean, this, this spells out what NASCAR is all about. And, um, you know, just to be able to participate on this racetrack, Kevin's won this race before, and it'd mean everything in the world for me to win it someday. But, uh, you know, when you finally roll into victory lane for your first time in the premier, you know, division of all the motorsports, it's pretty special. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, um, it seems like we always have dramatic finishes. I don't know why. Um, but I definitely winning the Daytona 500 was, was the, the highlight so far of, of wins for sure. Uh, you always hear the guys talk about the, the, the Daytona 500 just being different when you win it. And it really is because everything about it is just bigger. Uh, there's more media. There's more people. There's, there's more money. There's more everything. There's more preparation uh, that goes into it than any other race. So it's... Uh, it's a big deal uh, to win here, and, and we'd love to experience that again. Short track racing or speedway racing? 
I'm a short track guy. <laughs> yeah, we uh, seem to always run better on the short tracks, so I'm going to stick with the short tracks. I had a lot of fun over at Volusia in my dirt car. Um, you know, we've always, we all grew up racing, and it's so much fun to be able to go back and participate at uh, that local level and to be able to race. Um, you know, actually, that was nothing local about out there. That was some of the best modifieds and late models in the country, and uh, his freight car rates and all the racing has been good throughout the Speed Weeks. So uh, just it, that's what makes Speed Weeks, you know, so much fun. How do you prepare yourself differently for like Daytona than you would like Bristol? I mean, is there, is there more of a mental getting ready for Daytona? Mental, than there you is? said it. It's a, <laughs> it's a mental game. Um, you know, the guys in the shop do, they do most of the work. Without without their time and preparation into the car, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to even be competitive. So it just takes it takes months to build these cars right because especially with the with this particular car, uh, just there's so much there's so many templates and there's so many things and it's so it becomes so hard to find speed and you just have to constantly just keep working on the cars and working on the cars to make sure every little detail is right. Um, so it's it's a it's a lot of work. So what do you do mentally to prepare yourself like before you? go out on the track and they call your name, what do you mentally do? I just try to go into my own little world, uh, to be honest with you. I put my phone down, put everything away, and when it's race day, it's 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 race day, and, and you don't worry about anything else. Don't care about anybody else's problems. You don't care what anybody else is doing, and, and you're just doing your own thing. I got a lot of ADD, so uh, I just try to stay focused on something. And, uh, you know, whatever's right in front of me next, that's what I'm focused on. But, um, you know, it's such a long race. You got to be able to, uh, obviously, it's a little bit different. There's a lot of strategy that goes into this. And, and especially now with this two-car, you know, breakaway and stuff, a lot of people have been talking. I mean, there's there's no question that uh, your teammates have been talking to you, you know, trying to make a game plan. But uh, at the end of this race, the game plan always goes out the window. I mean, look at Tony Stewart and I yesterday. We did such a good, spe speaking of mental, yeah, I was like, <laughs> how, uh, what do you do as an owner? How excited were you that at least two of the three cars made it and uh, I was you a, got to bring them home? I was a little bit confused on, I didn't know who won. I yeah, who are you rooting for? Him or me, huh? That's the, problem. Run, uh, that's the problem is you gotta be, you gotta be neutral. I've learned that as a car owner. And, uh, they showed a replay, actually, I was, I was pissed, but I was watching the replay. <laughs> And it was you on the box and everybody, you were like, oh, am I supposed to be happy? Yes! <laughs> that was funny. Everybody around you is going nuts. You were like, okay. Hey, Clint, I, thought, I actually thought you were going to say, speaking of mental, when you were talking about yesterday uh, on, your, uh, on your show that, that you saw Tony naked when he was your roommate for a while. You know, I was like, whoa. You know, that's a, I'm that's like, that a, was bad. That's a bad sight. <laughs> I just tell that's you, when you go in your own little world. Yeah. That's when you turn around and, and usually just don't say anything. There was a black bear over at Volusia last year. I say it looked a lot the same. The problem is you just can't you can't get him out of bed, so you have to keep going back. It's like, dude, we have to go. You have to get your ass up. Well, guys, they're telling me the time's up, and I just want to say, hey, congratulations. Oh, Thank you guys for being here. Good boy. Kevin Harvick, let's give it up for these guys.